So good to be back in the house of the Lord. Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. No, God is so good. God is so faithful. He's a merciful God. He's the God full of grace. And we just want to say thank you for joining us this morning. The ones that's locking in this morning, we just want to say welcome to Eagles of Christ Ministry. Welcome to the family of Christ. Um, this is where every chain needs to fall off. We are not supposed to be in burden. We're not supposed to be in bondage. Amen. So we just want to welcome each and every one of you and we want to say, I pray that your hearts will be open this morning to receive the word of God because this word is about believing. If you don't believe, I'm sorry, this word is not for you because the word of God is all about believing. I believe that he's my father. I believe that he's my Lord and Savior. I believe that he took himself on the cross so that I can have life. And this is about believing. This morning is about believing. If you can believe the word this morning, this word is for you. Amen. So each and everyone that has joined us this morning, I want to welcome you. And uh, we're going to take Holy Communion this morning. We're going to at the end have a bit of a, a moment of silence. If you're watching from home, I pray that you will be part of this. Take Holy Communion, be quiet for that moment that we're going to be quiet here at, in, in the ministry. If you don't have grape juice, you can use water because Jesus went and he changed water into wine. So we're going to believe that that water will be changed into his blood. It's going to be a very important time this morning about the Holy Communion. It's very, very important this morning. And like I said, you have to believe. If you're going to take of this this morning, if you're going to take Holy Communion wherever you are, you have to believe what you're going to take in. Amen? Let us just close our eyes. Heavenly Father, we come before you this morning. And Lord, we are here to worship you. We are here to serve you and to glorify you. Heavenly Father, we come in into the presence of the Almighty here. And we submit our fleshy desires, worldly desires, and we submit it all unto you so that we can receive the Holy Spirit this morning. We want to receive from God, our Father, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Heavenly Father, we are here to receive the word. We are here to be molded. We are here to be changed. We want to be equipped by the word of God. We ask right now that you, wherever your children may be, wherever they are listening right now, we pray that the Holy Spirit will pour his love of fire there in that place upon your faith, your children, Lord. We ask that you will be glorified. I pray that people will be changed by this word this morning because it's all about you. Nothing is about me. It's about Jesus and himself. It's about Holy Spirit. It's about our Father God. We only serve one God. We only serve one Christ. And we only serve one Spirit. And we honor you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Guys, I would like to ask you to please share. If you are watching live, I ask from the bottom of my heart to share the word of God. Share this broadcast with us. I want to start off first with Romans 10 verse 9 this morning. And then I'm going to go into the teaching. But Romans 9, 10 verse 9 to 10, and I will show you. I will read the word of God for you this morning. Romans 9 says, If you can confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord, and this is the important part, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. You see, we want to be safe. Amen? So it's the believing part. Because verse 10 says, For it's by believing in your heart that you are made right with God. Can I get amen? It is believing in your heart, family, that makes us right with God. It, it saves us, but it makes us right with God. So it's the believing part that makes us right with God. Amen? Now, 
Let us go into the Old Testament this morning. And when I read this this week, I was blown. Because the Leviticus is in the Old. This is Moses' this is time. And it speaks about exactly about what Jesus did for you. So I want you guys to believe this verse. I want you to believe because I want you to be made right with God this morning. Amen. It says in Leviticus 17 verse 11, it, it quotes, For the life of the body is in the blood. For the life of the body is in the blood. I have given you the blood. Remember the word says, I have given you the blood on the altar to purify you, making you right with the Lord. Amen. This is in the Old Testament family of God. This is Leviticus. For the life of the body is in the blood. I'm giving you the blood on the altar to purify you and to make you right with the Lord. It is the blood given in exchange for a life. That makes purification possible. Now in Romans we read, if you believe, you will be made right with God. But Leviticus says, I've given you the blood on the altar to purify you, making you right with God. Amen? Family, this is, this is intense. Now, if we go to Luke 22, and, and we read, and this is about the Lost Supper. But we're gonna we're gonna go to verse 22 where Jesus speaks about the cup. What he made. He says, After supper he took the cup of wine and said, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people. Between God and his people. This is the new covenant. An agreement confirmed with my blood. Whose blood? That is Jesus' blood. Agreement. The covenant means agreement. It means settlement. It means a contract. And he said, yeah, it's an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. Family of God, this is Christ. This is his blood. It is his blood that brings life. It was his blood when we read in Leviticus. It says, for the life of the body is in the blood. We don't have life until we receive Jesus Christ. Then our life actually starts. I never had life. But when I met and I confessed and I believed, my life only started. It's because there's life in the blood of Christ. Can I get an amen this morning? Leviticus is telling us, for the life of the body is in the blood. I have given you the blood, uh, the blood on the altar. What did God do? He has given Jesus Christ on the altar, the cross, the blood. I have given you the blood on the altar. God, Jesus' blood was shed on the cross. That is the altar that we are reading here in Leviticus. I've given you, you will have life. Because if you can only believe, you will be made right with me. Because we believe that Jesus was placed on the altar. He, we believe that his blood was shed for us this morning. Now if we can believe that, family of God, we are already made right with God. You see, the altar that the Leviticus is talking about is the cross that Jesus took him and he was placed on the cross so that we can be made right. The blood that was shed through Jesus Christ is making us right through God. Why? To purify us. To purify us. Because now we are one with God. We are made right with God. So God, Jesus' blood, purifies us so that we are made right with God. Amen? You see, in Hebrews 10, verse 10, the Bible tells us by God's will, it is God's will for this to happen. That what we are reading in Leviticus, it is exactly what is God's will. It is 
By God's will, we have been purified and made holy once and for all through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus, the Messiah. So the altar in the Leviticus, where the Lord says, For the life of the body is in its blood. It's Jesus' blood that brings that gives us life. I've given you the blood. I've given it to you. I've given that blood to you. Jesus' blood. On the altar, on the cross, to purify you. Now Hebrews says, it's God's will. You have been purified and made holy once and for all through the sacrifice of the body of Jesus. So we read it in Leviticus and we see it in Hebrews. It was God's will for Jesus to come and say, here is my body, here is my blood. I'm allowing this so that you, because I love you, so that you can be purified. I want you to be purified so I will sacrifice my blood will give you life. My blood will make you right with my Father. And that is why Jesus had to die on the altar, on the cross, for purification to happen. You see, we are purified because of the blood of Jesus. Family of God, this is not the blood just to say, oh, I am cleansed, no more. The blood is the blood that purifies us. This is the blood that is actually making us right with God. Now, if you can believe that, the purification is, is about to happen. You see, you cannot be purified if you don't believe this. You cannot be pure. As the word in Romans says, the believing in your heart makes you right with God. So if you can believe that Jesus died on the cross, if you can believe this morning that it was His blood that was shed for you to get life, for you to be purified, purification is about to start. Why is the purify? Why do we need to be purified? What is the meaning of purified? It is to cleanse. My sins is forgiven. I am cleansed. I do not live in darkness. So when Jesus' blood was shed, was offered to give you love, you are pure and you believe that, you are being purified, meaning you are being cleansed from your sin. You are free from slavery. The word purified means free. Slavery, bondage, that that the enemy has crawled around you. You are being set free of that. It is also the purifier means the unburdenness. The word of God says, those who are heavy burdened, come to me. So the Lord is taking you and he makes you unburdened so you don't carry the burdens. That is meaning purified. It means the leather. Purification means the leather from what? It could be the depression. It could be sickness. It could be anxiety. Whatever you are being, whatever you are facing, if you believe, can believe that the blood of Christ was shed on the altar, was placed for you to get life, family of God, you are being delivered from everything this morning. You are being cleansed, you are being free, set free from slavery. Your burdens is taken away from you. Why? Because God says, I'm about to purify you. It is all got to do if you can believe this. You see, the Leviticus is talking about the altar. We know what blood gives life. Amen? It relieves you. Lord, I feel so good. I am so relieved that I've given my life to God because I was in darkness for so many years, facing depression, facing anxiety. I mean, when I met the Lord, He relieved me, He delivered me, He cleansed me from all of that. And He says, 
now you are purified, my son. No more burdens. No more sin. No more sickness. No more bondage. You are delivered from it. You are cleansed. You are my son. All you need to do is believe. Why is it so hard to believe that God took his only begotten son to say, yes, I love my children so much. I will leave the 99 for that one child of me just to cleanse him, just to deliver him from his slavery, from his bondage, from his depression, from his wherever he faced himself in his situation. Maybe you were trying to commit suicide and God says, but I want to relieve you from it. I want to set you free from that. But can you believe that I have sent the son that shed for you, that's his blood that will give you life? Can you believe that? Because if you can believe that this morning, you are being purified. You are being cleansed this morning. You see, let's finish the fit because it says, it is the blood given in exchange for a life that makes purification possible. This is Leviticus family of God. This is Moses' style. Moses told them not how to drink from the blood. Why? Because the blood is going to purify you. It, is give, it gives life. So yeah, it says, it is the blood given in exchange for our life. It is Christ's blood that gave, was in exchange for each and everyone's life this morning. It was Jesus' blood that was given in exchange for us to have life. Can we see this in Leviticus? Can we, if we read Leviticus this morning, can we see Jesus there? Can we see that Jesus gave his only blood, his God gave his only son on the altar for exchange for a life, for you, for me, for a family member? I mean, come on, there was an exchange. God says, this is my son, my only son, who I love so without sin, spotless, that I'm going to give up on this altar, on this cross, for my children's life. One blood, one blood, one drop of Christ's blood purifies us. You see, if there was no exchange, there was, the purification was not possible. And Leviticus says, given in exchange for our life, that, make, that makes purification possible. And it is widely possible for us to be cleansed. Why is it possible for us to be purified? It's because Jesus' blood was the exchange. His blood gives life. His blood gave us an opportunity to come to our Father and say, I'm a sinner. I confess with my, my mouth that I'm a sinner and I believe in my heart. I believe in my heart that you have rose Jesus from the, from the dead. You see, it's the purification. God wants to start the purification in your life. He wants to start that. He wants to purify you this morning, family of God. And we're going we're gonna to have the blood and we're going to have the body. But when we're going to take this this morning, we're going to understand but why are we taking it? It's because purification needs to happen. We need to become purified. When you God, it's easy to take it, go out there and sin again. And we delay our being purified. We are delaying the process that God wants to do in our lives because we take it, but we don't believe it. We take it, but the world has a grip on us. And we are delaying that what God wants to do with us. God wants to redeem us. God wants to relieve us from our sin. God wants to deliver us from slavery. God wants to cleanse us. But the only way He can cleanse us if we can believe it. And say, Lord, when I walk out here, when I walk out of my house this morning, I believe that I'm going to be purified. I believe that I'm going to be set free from my sin, 
from slavery, from whatever the, the enemy had bondage over me. Why? Because I believe in the blood. It's not my blood. I cannot cut myself this morning open, pour it in a glass, and say, drink it because you will be purified. It is not the blood that was shed on the altar. It is not my blood that was crucified on the cross for a life. It was Jesus' life. He took it upon himself. And he placed, God placed him on the altar, the cross, because his blood was exchanged for you to be purified. Amen? If you've got a family member that is not safe, that you want to draw, you take it and believe and say, Lord, I believe that in my whole heart that as I take this, in agreement, see this, it was a covenant agreement. It was a sacrifice. Jesus spoke about an agreement that it was a sacrifice. So Lord, as I take this for a family member, see there's a bloodline. There's a bloodline. That blood, if I have to test my blood and my mom's blood, it will be the same bloodline. So there must be the bloodline. We've got the same blood as Christ, so we can take it in for them and say, Lord, as I take this, I believe that as I take from your blood, that person will be purified because we're carrying the same DNA as Christ. We're carrying the same blood type as God. Yes, a lot of them are A, A, B, C, A plus, B plus, I don't know. My DNA says I'm the same as God. I've got my father's blood. I've got Jesus' blood. So I can take it for someone. I can believe that God can touch somebody's life. It is the believing part this morning. Amen? Family of God, if it was not for the blood of Christ, we would have never been able to be purified and become right with God. It is because of Christ's blood. It's because of that blood that was shed on the cross that makes me purified before, makes me right with God this morning. This is a relationship. It's a relationship between you and your other father that he wants to say, listen here, I've made a plan. There was a sacrifice on the altar. All I want is relationship. All I want is for you to believe this morning. Because if you can believe, you are made right with God this morning. Amen. Family of God, Romans 3, verse 23 to 26 says, Everyone has sinned. We all fall short of God's glorious standard. Yet God, yet God, in His grace, freely makes us right in His sight. He did this. Through, the, through Christ Jesus when He freed us from the penalty for our sins. It says in Leviticus, Leviticus said, It is the blood given in exchange for a life that makes purification possible. That is Leviticus. Verse 25 of Romans 3 says, For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice for sin. He presented the exchange to happen. The exchange that happened when he presented Jesus for me to be free. If I had to bring a cow and a, a donkey or a, a lamb every time I sinned, I would have been bankrupt by now. But God came and says, there's one man and I'm going to place upon this altar. And he's going to be the blood that's going to bring life. He's going to be the one that takes his blood. that's going to purify, cleanse you from all your sin. And here he says, For God presented Jesus as the sacrifice, the exchange. People are made right with God when they, what? When they believe that Jesus sacrificed his life shedding his blood. Can we believe this morning, family of God? Can we believe that I am purified, I am cleansed, I am delivered, I am set free from slavery because of the blood of Jesus? Can you believe that this morning? That Jesus
Jesus was presented, the exchange had to happen for me to get life. In, for the life of the body is in its blood. It is in God's blood. It is in Jesus' blood for me to get life. The enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but I've come to give you life and life in abundance. The more you believe, the more your life is going to be abundant. Yes, we're going to face trials. Yes, we're going to face tribulation. Who cares? I am purified through the blood of Christ. I am cleansed. I am set free. So no weapon formed against me shall prosper because I know who was sacrificed. I knew the exchange. I knew that God presented Jesus for my sins. Now I can be purified. This sacrifice shows that God was being fair when he held back and did not punish those who sinned in the time past. Verse 26, for he was looking ahead and including them in what he would do in this present time. That blood, that blood is still here, present. It's now. It's not for then. It's for the present time. It's for now. I can still be set free. I can still be purified. I am my father's child. Amen? God did this to demonstrate his righteousness. For he himself is fair, just and he makes sinners right in his sight when they believe in Jesus. This morning I said to you, if you won't believe, then I'm sorry. It's the believing part. It's the believing part that can help us. We can be stubborn till we are hundred, but a time is gonna come that we have to believe that there was somebody that's blood gives life. But it comes with the believing. It comes with believing. If I never believe, when you give your life, the first thing is, do you believe that Jesus has come to die for you? Do you believe in us? And I confess that I believe that I had so much sin. But to know that I just have to believe that my sin is taken away through the blood of Jesus, I can be purified. I can be purified, I can be cleansed because of one man's blood. Because of one man's blood, I'm entitled to be purified. I can be set free. You can be set free of your drug addiction, your, your, your lust for other women, your, 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 um, your anger, your, your sin, whatever you're facing. Maybe you are facing sickness. You can be delivered this morning if only you can believe that the blood was the exchange for your life. You can be purified. You can be set free. I, can, I believe that. But the person that is going through, the person that needs healing, that person needs to believe. I cannot believe for that person. I need, they need to believe. This is important, family. It's because of the belief that makes us right with God. If you have unbelief, the doors is not going to open. The time that you're going to say, this is what the word says. This is, this is the word that I'm speaking this morning. It is the believing part in your heart. If you believe in your heart, that makes you right with God. Don't believe Warren. Believe your father. Believe the word. The word makes you right with God. Believe the blood. The blood has cleansed me. The blood has purified me. Because Jesus gave it for exchange for my life, for my sin. He was the sacrifice. His blood was the agreement, the new covenant. That was the lamb, or that was the blood that was sacrificed on the altar. That is the covenant that we have, the agreement that settles it. That I am purified, I made holy before the eyes of God because I believe when I drink the blood of Christ this morning, I believe when that blood was shed, I am made right with God. It is by believing. 
believing family of God. It's easy to read, but it's the believing when we walk out there and we still got to believe. When we came out to our cars this morning, got out of our houses, are we still going to believe tomorrow? Are we going to believe by Wednesday? We cannot stop believing. We must continue to believe because the more we believe, the more we are purified, purified. The more we are cleansed, the more we are delivered because we will not stop believing. But when we face one thing, one thing, among friends, where are you, God? I thought I believed in a God, but look what I'm going through. Then doubt enters. Remember, the word Jesus said to Timothy, stop your unbelief and start believing. Yes, the box. Yes, yeah, the box that you wanted to see. Stop your unbelieving. Stop waiting for God just to open doors, but nothing comes from you. God asks you one thing. God is asking you one thing this morning, is to believe. That's all he's asking from us. Family, is it so much to us, is to believe. I was stubborn. I was rebellious. But when I confessed the believing part, God changed it. My whole world was upside down. But just by believing it, when I confessed and said, I believe he died, didn't know what it means. But I believed it. I felt so clean. I felt so clean. Baptism. Why is it so important? Because it purifies us. It cleanses us. Family of God, Colossians 2, and we are being studying it through Bible study. And we are underst understanding this now. Colossians 2, 12 to 15 is, For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized, and with him you were raised to a new life. He gives life because you trusted the mighty power of God. Trusted, believe. You trust. You believe in the power of God. You believe in the blood that was shed on this altar, on the cross. You trust it. Now you give new life. He says, to new life because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. You were dead because you were dead because of your sins. And because of your sin, nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ, for he forgave all our sins. He cancelled the record of charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. All our charges, all our wrongdoings, he took it all away through the blood of Christ that was on the altar, that was on the cross. And he says, just trust. Just believe. That's all I'm asking you, is believe. I've done the whole thing. I've done it. I've done the exchange. I presented the land. I've done it all. All I'm asking you is believe. Get rid of your sin by believing. Verse 15, in this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. When you're God, if you're not going to be disarmed by this, the enemy will have spiritual powers over you. He will have authority over you. That's why we cannot get rid of our sin. Because it says, I have disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by victory over them on the cross. We take the blood that we don't believe. We take the blood that we don't trust. As soon as the blood, as soon as you can start trusting and believing that the blood was shed for a life, that the blood was there to, for exchange for your life. There was an exchange. It was your life. You are disarming all spiritual rulers, all authority that the enemy had, he disarmed. He has no power, no authority, 
nothing, he doesn't even rule you, he doesn't have nothing over you, just by you, by believing. That's it. Believe that blood. Believe that that blood was for you, for exchange for your life, so that you can gain life. I mean, what does the blood really mean? What does this blood mean? Christ's blood redeems us, rescues us. He rescued us. His blood rescued us. He brought, his blood brings us into fellowship with God. His blood cleanses us. His blood gives power so that every stronghold that the enemy had over you is broken. Everything. Everything is broken by blood, by Christ's blood, by one man's blood that was sacrificed. That it that was a God represented it, exchanged it, says, You have my son, he's going to take all of it for your life. Now we're going to end with this, and we're going to have holy communion. Family of God, we're going to have a time of silence. If you, if this word helped you, especially if you're looking online and you don't have grape juice, it's fine. Take a glass of water, take a piece of bread. It's an act of faith this morning. And I'm not going to do it for you. I'm not going to do it. There's an opportunity I presented to you. I presented this morning to you. And if you believe this morning, if you can believe this morning that that blood was for you for exchange for your life, if that blood is for you to cleanse God wants to purify you. He wants to cleanse you. He wants to deliver you. He wants to heal you. He wants to set you free. This is, this is, this is the time. I present it. You guys are going to do the act of faith and you're going to come and receive it. Not me. I cannot do it for you. I cannot believe for you. I cannot trust for you. This is all between you and your Father now. Now I'm going to read this to you in 1 Peter 1, 18 to 19. Just think about it for this moment. For you know that God paid a ransom to save you from the empty life you inherited from your ancestors. For God paid a ransom and he was not paid with mere gold also, they cannot, money cannot buy the sacrifice. Money cannot buy this exchange. He says, which lose their value. So gold and silver loses their value. It was the precious blood of Christ, the sinless, spotless lamb of God. What do you want to tell? What I want to tell you is the word says it was not paid with mere gold and or silver, which lose their value. Just think about it. You go and you watch the news and you check the gold price went down, then it platinum price went up, then it's down, then it's up. But there's one man's blood that doesn't lose value. Until today, it saves lives. Till today, you can be purified. Present. Now. It's never going to lose value, family of God. It's, it can never be too late. It is only the right time. And God is doing it today. Today that marks new beginnings, the 10th month. It's new. It's new. It's now. Nothing can separate us from the love that God has for you. That blood has not left, lost its value. Can you believe this morning? Can you trust? That as you take on this blood, that I'm going to have life. That I'm going to be purified. I'm going to be set free. My sins is taken away. My thoughts is being renewed. Come on, family of God. I present it this morning. When you are ready, baby, family of God, we're going to have a moment of silence, maybe for three minutes. Don't go offline. Please don't. Take a glass of water. Take bread. This is an act of faith. This is 
by believing. The word says, it's believing in your heart. It's not what we take in. Take a glass of water, a piece of bread. We will have grape juice. If you have grape juice, praise God. But it's, it's all about believing this morning. It's all about being set free and being purified. You see, I'm going to read it again. It is blood. It's the blood given in, given in exchange for a life that makes purification possible. If you can believe, it makes it possible that you are being purified this morning. You're going to be cleansed. You're going to be set free, delivered, redeemed, rescued. Come on, friends. A few minutes few minutes, you and your father, come and be purified this morning. Come and be purified this morning. Come and receive. Heavenly Father, we come before you. And Lord, we take your blood right now. We take your blood and we thank you that this is the start of purification. Lord, this is the start that we are being purified made right with God. This is the morning that we have the opportunity to be made right with our Father in Heaven. Our Heavenly Father, the one that was there in the beginning. This is the, this is the start for purification to be possible, to make it possible. This is a new start, a new beginning. This blood that was shed on the altar, on the cross, for exchange for my life. I have the life, and it's based on the foundation of the Word of God, Jesus Christ Himself. This is the time, Heavenly Father, this is your body. This is the body that will be sealed down to make that, that purification protected. That we will not be any partakers of this world, but we are partakers of Jesus Christ's blood that died on the cross, agreement that we are being purified, covenant, the agreement that Jesus took the sacrifice for our sins, exchange for our sins, so that we can be made right before God. We believe this this morning, Lord. We are being set free this morning. Lord, we invite you right now in our hearts. We believe, we trust. No more doubt. No more condemnation. Those that says we were sinners, they will forget about that sin and they will see that we are being made right before the eyes of the Lord. Come into our lives this morning, Lord, as we take part of the blood that brings life. In the name of Jesus. Come, guys. We will feel it's time. You guys outside, out there, looking, watching, I want to tell you one thing. You are purified. You are made holy. You are, God says you are, you are perfected in the eyes of the Lord. You are being created into the image of the Lord. Don't let people condemn you. Don't let people lie. Put lies into your life. This is the time, this morning, that you are being purified this morning. You are being made right with the Lord. Can you believe that? You are made right before the eyes of the Lord.
when we, as I was praying over the yeah, the Lord is telling me to tell you, arise and shine for your light has come. This that you've walked in darkness, I don't know who you are. This that you've been walking in darkness, God says your light is here. Your light has come right now because you believe. You will no longer walk in darkness. You are mine, you belong to me. That that I've exchanged Jesus' blood was exactly for you that's been walking in that darkness. It is for you, my child, says the Lord. Receive your light. Come to me, I want to comfort you, says the Lord. It's not going to be an easy road, but I'm going to do it with you. I love you, you are mine, you belong to me. Receive the light, family of God, receive the light. This 2020 was a year of darkness. We've all been walking in a place of darkness, it was hard. But right now, because we believe in that blood, right now, because Jesus' blood was the, 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 the exchange for you, we can receive our light. We can receive the door, new door to walk in. Family of God, I pray that this word was encouraging to you. I really pray that this word has pierced our hearts and that you will start believing and trusting to the Father that has given us the blood, given us Jesus Christ for our sins. He loves you. We at Eagles of Christ, the team, we love you. And we are here for one of, one of you. May you have a super blessed week. And please share this, this video, this, this, this teaching. Because this, the Lord says, I've left the 99 for just one. And if we can save one soul for the love of Christ, for the blood of Christ, we've done something. Amen. May you have a blessed week. May God be the center of it. And um, we have Bible study on Wednesdays. We have Yam on a Friday. You guys can contact us if you want to be part of our family. And just know, you're not alone. May you guys have a super blessed week and enjoy being purified through Christ. Stay blessed.